pleasant morning to you wherever you are. It is March the 3rd, March the 4th, 2011, and we're glad to be with you today, another day in God's Word, and certainly hope you had a great night rest and healthy and doing the things you want to do. And it's our pleasure again to welcome you to Spice Morning for Friday on the GIS Channel 12, and in some cases 22. And again, we're glad to have your company on this day. Well, for those of you celebrating March 3rd birthday, we want to say hello to you. We want to greet you very specially indeed this morning. Wish you well, and it's the start of a weekend, and hope that uh, the weekend brings very special things to you this year, birthday weekend. And to those of you celebrating an anniversary at this time, we also salute you and wish you well, and hope it rekindles the memories of early years, and also there are special things to you. Well, if you're recovering from some sickness or injury on this day and you are in an institution, we pray and we certainly hope that with time healing will come and you'll be certainly up and about again to do the things that you love to do. In the world of sports this morning, well, uh, humiliation for one of the host countries, Bangladesh this morning being bowled out for 59 runs. It sounds like um, Carnage playing River Road. It doesn't sound like international cricket song like win ball cricket 59 in less than 20 overs and the West Indies well no problem they could have sent two tail enders made it very quickly losing this the wicket of Canadian Devon Smith for six Bangladesh really hopeless today and a crawl in excess of what 50,000 plus certainly went home disappointed recall that Bangladesh recently beat New Zealand 5-0 they were above the West Indies in the world rankings, but again, I never get carried away with the world rankings. It's basically a computer event that says how regular you play. It has nothing to do with the quality. It's just how frequent you play. And, um, well, again, if you win, you go up the rankings. So West Indies certainly having some sweet revenge. Remember Bangladesh? Well, they were in the Caribbean two years ago. They defeated the West Indies in the one days. West Indies had a well, there was industrial trouble in the West Indies team. The key players were on strike and the reserves uh, were there. And uh, Bangladesh certainly made mincemeat of them, both in the test matches and the one day internationals. Today, in front of the world stage, Bangladesh bowled out for 59 runs. West Indies getting the runs very quickly indeed. And um, New Zealand also had no problem with Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe promising performance against Australia in the first match. Today they were washed away, um, made 166 uh, thereabout, and the Kiwis got it without losing a single wicket. Pakistan had to struggle to beat Canada. Canada looked like they were winners at one stage, 104 or 5 or thereabout for, for four wickets, and then all crashed to 138 all out. So we've seen some intriguing games, intriguing results, and maybe we expected a closer game between West Indies and Zimbabwe, but that's not a reality. We should be joined by Alan Foti this morning, as well as Michelle Gibbs, M Michelle Graves Warwick, um, and uh, Leah, I think um, they should join us this morning, as well as Martin Alexander from Happy Hill Secondary School. We're also going to have some young leaders from the Anglican High School with us this morning. And it's Carnival Weekend in Caracu, it's Carnival Weekend in Trinidad and Tobago and in Dominica, and where it happens in Brazil. Massive Carnival, and uh, don't you forget in, um, in which part of the United States, I'll tell you in a moment, Mardi Gras. And um, I'm sure we all are going to be looking at the television screen here and there to see what's it like in Trinidad in Brazil. And uh, my good friend is on the line this morning again, and always good to have um, Roel Patterson. Roel, good morning and great to have you. And I suppose before we talk a little carnival, you surprised the way West Indies, well, uh, didn't he have to sweat? Three bowlers used and they were able to destroy um, the host nation, Bangladesh. Yes, we of course, good morning first of all to you and of course your viewers and your listeners. I'm um, really surprised. I really thought that Bangladesh would have put up, of course, uh, better resistance. Seeing, of course, that they have number eight in the world, West Indies number nine. Added to that, they've been playing some good cricket in recent times. And of course, on home turf, I really expect them to have put up a better performance. 
Right, and how is the Caracol cr cricket season going? Uh, you sent me a fixture, I think, earlier this week. Uh, uh, things are going well? Things are going pretty good. Um, well, actually, last week it was going to be the commencement of, the, of, of course, the competition, but, of course, we had a tremendous amount of rain on Saturday, not Sunday, on Saturday. But, then, of course, it left all the areas very water-soaked and so forth. So it was unfortunate that we could not ever get the um, competition off the last week. But it's going to be off. Um, it's going to be on from tomorrow, Saturday. We're going to have Saturday and, and Sunday games. So the first series of match is going to be tomorrow. Promises to be an exciting time against a backdrop of a number of people are going to be in Caracol for the 2011 Carnival Festival. So it promises to be um, a cracker, opening cracker, of course, at, at three venues that are, of course, Harveyville and Hillsborough and Dover. Well, I suppose cricketers can, after us, well, let's hope there's a great sun bath for the cricketers. The rain will stay away and fall elsewhere. And um, I think the big event in Karaku this weekend. It's certainly the carnival. Tonight is the first show? Tonight is the first show, Ray. Um, interestingly, is that um, we're going to be starting off with the Calypso competition. Um, some um, uh, 13 artists are down to perform. Yesterday they had the draw. And if I could just run them for, me, for you, of course, it's quite a while we have not had such a formidable cast in Calypso competition. But we have, of course, Pupa Lindy going to be open the show um, tonight, followed by Superstar, uh, the, the reigning and the former and also presently reigning Calypso Monarch being the done that and can do it again. Crate, um, a former Calypso Monica also won in 2003. The Roach would have won in 2000 and, and 2001. He, he's going to be singing in the fourth position. Followed by Super Flying Flint. Left is a former Calypso Monarch, number six. Hugo seven, Marty eight. Is that Marky, Marty is a newcomer, one of three females in the lineup. Mr. Vellon, for the first time in competition, will be singing in position number nine. Sugar Patch, a former Calypso Monarch, won in 1999 and 1992. He'll be singing in position number 10. Hunter, a, a fantastic youngster, one of course that you're familiar with, you've seen him on stage already. And he has grown tremendously. He'll be position number 11. Major Dixon, be in position number 12. And of course, uh, the one of the, the third and final female in the competition, Lady Charm, for the very first time in competition, a student of Bishop's College, she'll be singing in position number 13. So a fantastic lineup, Ray, and it promises to be an exciting show this evening from 9 o'clock at the main stadium in Lauriston. Each of the colleagues will perform performing one song, and um, I can tell you that, that, that there are some pretty good episodes um they're very hard biting some of course of political in nature some of social in nature but they are well constructed and promises to be a really good and exciting experience uh, tonight's event i suppose the calypsos are current affairs yes um a number of them uh, there are um for example um sugar patch has one that sounds pretty good mr villain also has a very good a f fantastic calypso we have the have that heard um Popolindi. superstar of course she's always been there um she has never placed a third lower than third in competition um she would have won it several times she's also defending champion I've not heard of, but actually from reports what she sang for me um off the um off the the cd sounds pretty good Crit did an interview with him last night and all has been a fantastic um performer um i don't know if you saw his performance last year the one with, with a glove singing about um hit them with kai so roach as we know roach um all has been around there pretty good the leftist so we got a number of good um calypsonians and of course like i said the, the 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 content of the calypsos are extremely powerful and uh, i see you sent me some pictures of the beautiful queens that ah. are parading Oh. And the stage is set for that, and is it Saturday? It's going to be a majestic Saturday night. It's going to be tomorrow night. As I speak, of course, the red carpet is already laid out just about. Now they are putting, of course, some gold trimmings to the edges, and, of course, some platinum and diamond trimmings to the toppings in the center, indication that it's going to be a majestic, wonderful night. Five beautiful ladies from five outstanding cultural communities of Kiariku and Pete Martinic. They are going to be on stage for what has been dubbed Majestic Saturday Night. Um, the first is going to be having Linda Alexis. She's going to be, she's from Leicester. She'll be opening the show. She'll be the first contestant on stage. Followed by DeAndre Samuel from Torpor. She'll be the second contestant on stage. Interestingly, DeAndre Samuel is a person actually represented Carol for the Miss Akavar show last year and placed second runner up. Third, we're going to be having Andia Wilson from Bosseju. Fourth is going to be Chantal Dixon from um, Lauriston, and the final contestant will be Princess Mitchell from the beautiful cultural village of, of Mount Royal to, of course, roll up a red carpet at the 2011 Majestic Saturday night tomorrow night, Mini Stadium, Lauriston. And then the curtains come down in terms of this, the, the uh, stage shows. 
Well, right. the Soka Monarch, yes, the cuttings come down, of course, on the Soka Monarch on Sunday. It's going to be a wonderful time, Ray. How many um, Calypsonians have there? 20 plus or less? Nah, fact, we went into the semi final with some 34 Soka Monarch artists, and that actually from the Soka Monarch was streamed down to uh, 15 artists to, of course, challenge the reign of the discipline. They, that will be starting at 9 o'clock, and I can tell you, um, in 2011, we had roughly over 100 soca songs at a location of over, over 45 soca artists, and um, of course, singing in 2011. And it promised to be a charged atmosphere against the backdrop of, of course, and that very same Sunday, we are expecting, of course, the slum and the D and the and the the the, the job the job job crew of over five hundred strong to arrive in Carico on Sunday maybe at around two PM and they're all gonna be at of course that Soka Monarch show. It promises to be the uh, a fantastic event is going to be, as I said, it's going to be a really war of, of course, the Soka Bajans to wrestle the, 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 the crown from uh, the discipline. That in itself is going to take the momentum into the Juve. So it promises to be an exciting package of the 2011 experience as, as the glitz and glamour comes to town from this weekend. And I suppose, yeah, if somebody tells me that these jab jabs are going to come up on what, Alexia or one of these boats? Yes, one of the, the big boats. Um, I, when I, I, I spoke to him um, uh, two weeks ago, um, he told me that roughly they had about 200, um, he already sold about 200 tickets. I spoke to the president of the Carnival Committee who actually visited Grenada sometime last week, a week before, yeah. and he told me that from, from um, the reports that he got, there were just about over 500. So we expect by a Sunday, we could see a rough in the estimation of almost 700 of, of the members of the jab jab from crew from Inland Green has been a part of Caracos Carnival. No, that is, that's very significant. That's going to do a lot for Caracos Carnival. Simply because one of the things with Caracos is that despite the fact that, of course, we're well known for our Shakespeare Mass, and of course, we are the leaders in, the, in that aspect, the Juve, Greater Play is one of the best Juves in the entire Caribbean. So for that, a number of people are looking forward to that. Added to that, we're going to be having some members of this Bobby Steele and the summer crew coming into Caracos. Bobby Steele made a presentation to one Chanel Edmond, and they'll be, they'll be, of course, on the streets of Carnival, they were portraying spirit of Carnival in 2011. He said in an interview that not, they did not only send the costume, but a number of them who over the years would have gone to Trinidad to be a part of the Trinidad Carnival would no longer be going south in 2011, but rather heading north to Caracos Carnival in 2011. So he promises to be a really spectacular event. I mean, it's going to be the biggest festival, the biggest show on earth, and I tell you, it's going to roll off from this afternoon or this evening tonight, of course, with the Calypso's and the Queen Show's and, the, of course, the, the, the Soka Monarch and, of course, the daytime activities in terms of the Juve, the Pajan, the Shakespeare Mass. So it's a nicely well-packaged event just waiting to, of course, be delivered to thousands of people from across the Caribbean, across the world, who are going to be in this 13 square mile gym to experience the true cultural aspect of a Caracos Brillantan Carnival Festival. You sound as a poet there. <laughs> well, actually, I guess maybe it's a whole part of it because we're speaking Shakespeare Mass, despite the fact that I don't know any speeches, you know what I'm saying? Good. But you sound very poetic there, and uh, if I was perhaps um, uh, just listening from the internet, I certainly would be, 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 be thinking about heading to Caracos at some particular time in life. Well, Harry, by the way, you, you gotta be you, you gotta be in Jericho, and no, I'm not gonna be there. But we're gonna have somebody, <sighs> a couple of guys representing Jess, Trevor, and um, uh, um, Shabazz are uh, gonna be there to do some recording and so forth. Okay. It's always difficult to get out here most times, but certainly I'll make time in the future. All right, definitely. I'll have a lot of time. Nice to have you too, man. Yeah, I love it. As you know, it's 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 certainly a discipline event. It's certainly one of the events you can you know, enjoy and then complement it with the beach, complement it with so many other things. I suspect that we'll have a lot of DJs in the streets and, um, and bars and so along the streets. So it's going to be an economic activity for many people in Caracol. Definitely, sorry. And yesterday, I'm actually doing an interview with, of course, members, a uh, member of the Northern Division of the Royal Grenada Police Force. And actually, he spelled out for, of course, us, um, the criteria that, of course, that would that they would have governing the traffic regulations for 2011, the Carnival Festival. And also, of course, the issue of zero tolerance. So it's going to be a fantastic time. And speaking about the vendors, um, we had a, uh, there's a release now, a public release, and of course, the various radio stations speaking, to, talking to the, the, the people who are running the various stalls. But the importance of having, of course, your, when your food badge, 
and the importance of not just going and of course knock up a stall but the, impo- but the importance of having a decent stall having something very presentable um, the committee made it quite clear they would not be accepting people just of course knocking up any old ply any old governor just um, to be a part of the event uh, when it comes to of course vending and of course running a stall but the importance of having a decent stall and not just for the committee in itself but also I think vendors should also recognize that that if you have a decent stall you attract a lot more you attract a lot more business because of course it speaks of course to your own personality and of course when you have a decent stall it attract customers to come to your stall so that in itself um, the members of um, the people who would be vended in 2011 they are aware of that and so far we have seen I mean um, people just starting to of course put up the frame the scale in terms of um, 2011 an indication and of course they have this and they definitely adhere to the call from the committee we have also seen a number of the guys from mainland grain who sell of course what I call the Rasta Sanders and of course the, the glasses and this kind of thing the I in care, of course, to speak. They have already begun to, of course, sell their products on, on, on the side, you know what I'm saying? So, indication that, of course, we hope it's going to be an economic spill off for just about everyone. We can tell that the hotel rooms are extre- uh, all filled already in terms of the bookings. And I expect, but of course, by tonight, they would be, of course, filled with, with of course, <clears throat> with, with, with a number of people that are going to be in for the 2011 experience. The rental business, I can tell you that all the rentals are out already. If they are not out, those that you would see, of course, at the various rental departments, they're already booked for this weekend. So indication that it will be a wonderful spin-off for 2011. Hey, I hope you're in business so you can do something. Well, I wish I were. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing a great job. I want to thank you very much, Roll, and um, enjoy it for me and you, and I hope you will be up and about on Monday. I can call you on Tuesday. So sure, you I mean, some... Monday, uh, man, Monday definitely I'll be down at the Juve, so um, I'll be happy to, of course, let you guys get a feel of the real atmosphere as what we expect for 2011. And if, of course, if we can send that kind of feeling and the vibes, the vibration, the verb, the energy of the 2011 Juve as has been planned or once it's executed that way, I'm certain that, <coughs> that of course, we haven't listened to that. When you listen to that on Monday morning, I'm certain by 9 o'clock you would want to be in Cariago. <laughs> Well, enjoy for me and you, and I know you don't drink, so I, I'm sure you're going to be up and about healthy doing. I trust that everyone in Karaku for this weekend will be, you know, certainly on their P's and Q's, and will be incident-free as was in the past, and certainly hope in the future. And I want to thank you for joining us this morning. I appreciate it very much, and we're going to keep in touch with the cricket, but for this now, this weekend, I'm sure the talk of Karaku and Pity Martinique, I'm sure it's carnival, and... I want to wish the organizers, including a young chairman, very impressed with his ability and his his, you know, his uh, commitment. Mm-hmm. So let me thank you and wish you guys all the best again. All the best, man. You take care, right? Thanks a lot, Roll. Okay, boy. 25 minutes past the hour. This is this morning for Friday, March the 3rd. I want to say hello and hi to just about everyone tuned in this morning. If you're celebrating a birthday, it's our privilege to wish you well. And... Um, uh, hello to the ladies of the nation, International Women's Day of Prayer. Uh, there are going to be church services in the respective parishes today. Well, Carrick, who I understand, is going to be later in the month. But I know at the cathedral today, there will be the International Women's Day of Prayer. Her Excellency Lady Glean will be there, as well as, uh, you know, the respective churches. And um, the guest speaker will be Mrs. Andrea Phillip excellent spokesperson and i'm sure if you go there you will be enriched by her presentation and in saint andrew it's the church of the apostles i'm sure about that one but i know they are also in saint there they will be in saint patrick and uh, things in mark so we want to wish everyone participating at the very best and certainly pray for the nation and each one of us and hope we can certainly um, build a nation of peace and goodwill to each other it's also International Women's Day Observance this weekend in the parish of St. David, Bellevue, Plainfield to be specific. The day will be on Tuesday, but it will be celebrated here on Sunday. And again, we want to encourage organizations, church groups and to be a part of this activity. It's done under the auspices of the Ministry of Social Development and um, in conjunction with Gino and other organizations multi partite grouping and again it's a wonderful event to demonstrate solidarity with the progress that women have made in Grenada and across the world. Let's take a quick break. We have much more coming up on Spice Morning and glad to have you with us. 
It's where the action is each and every Tuesday evening from 8 p.m. Join sports enthusiasts, those who play, organize, and follow the game as they discuss the issues that matter most in sports. Relive the action of sports and give your views. So let's make a beat. Sports Forum on GIS TV each and every Tuesday from 8 p.m. If you spend two hours in a room where someone's smoking, you'll inhale the equivalent of four cigarettes. My dad shared an office with a chain smoker, eight hours a day, five days a week, for more than ten years. Not surprisingly, he died of lung cancer. I've had enough of secondhand smoke. Have you? Take your family and friends out for a treat. Come to Sunset City Food Festival this Saturday and every last Saturday in each month from 5 p.m. Come and enjoy Oil Down, Tanya Log, Manish Waters, Cowskin Sauce, Bakes and Fish Cake, Wild Meat, Fruit Juices and everything local. Come out, meet and greet and have a good time enjoying great local foods in a warm and peaceful environment. Music, a live band. Sunset City Food Festival, Diamond Street, Victoria, this and every last Saturday. I'm looking to see you there. Stomp out careless or intentional bushfires, dead out. Youths, hunters, smokers, let's prevent bushfires. Here's why. Yeah, yeah, bushfires. The shoreline's wet, crops should be bushfires. Can eat the food, scarcity. Threatened by your diversity. Cause water shortage, water calamity. Bushfires, watershed deplete. Water quality, threatened property, life and security. Bushfires set intentionally, what insanity. Bushfires can cause millions in losses annually and are often caused by careless or intentional actions indictable under the law. Forests are life-giving. Save them. A message from the Fire Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force and the Caribbean Open Trade Support. Thank you, Sarah, and good morning to you and good morning to all in the media. Um, Carnival weekend in the Caribbean. I was talking about New Orleans a while ago and it it's, sort of, it's going to be a, it's always a huge carnival there. I suppose after the flood, maybe it went a little low, but I'm sure six years after, I'm sure it's going to be about to peak again in New Orleans, Mardi Gras, and um, always exciting to see exits, um, excerpts on the television and so forth. Uh, we, the funny masks and the funny costumes people play in New Orleans. I'm going to be talking to Dwayne in a while, Dwayne, our cricket uh, expert, and uh, follows the game very passionately. And we want to congratulate the athletes of the GBSS and SAS, the two of the, well, on, uh, let's call them big guns. They have won in the call more than any other team, um, any other school, in, in terms of the historical thing. Uh, SAS, is in, SAS might have won, I think, about two or three more than G GBSS. but. Both schools held a sports meet yesterday. I'm sure they're going to be great competition among them. McDonald College, I'm sure, going to be part of it. Westerhall Secondary School going to be part of it too. So, in the call, you sure to see some fantastic competition among just not the traditional powerful schools, but there is an excellent Wesley College athlete. I know that's just one, but there are others. And uh, yesterday we heard about Michaela John. She's been around for a little while participated in Crifter Games and other international events and glad to, well, this morning I heard that she set a couple new records in the 400 meters and other events and we want to wish her well and certainly hope she can continue to improve in times and, well, whatever it is. Well, Dwayne is with us this morning and Dwayne, I suppose a few days ago we were speculating whether or not West Indies would be better than Canada or Kenya or Zimbabwe, um, but we never predicted um, the host nation, Bangladesh, would have been such a disaster in front of their home crowd. Can't think about a team being more disastrous in front of their home crowd in the history of World Cup than Bangladesh. Dwayne, good morning. Yes, well, good morning to you, Ray, and I'm happy to see the West Indies getting over Bangladesh. Bangladesh didn't really put up much of a fight, but I'm still happy for the West Indies because if you looked at what the journalists were saying about this particular game, most of them actually had Bangladesh to beat the West Indies. I'm not sure why Bangladesh rated um, just above the West Indies at number eight, West Indies at number nine, but to me, that was a little misleading. Um, the West Indies lost 
a series to Bangladesh um, last year. But of course, we all knew what happened with the likes of Chris Gill and so on missing from that squad. So I think it's not a true reflection of the abilities of the teams, um, West Indies and Bangladesh. I think the West Indies are a far superior team. Having said that, I didn't think the Bangladesh um, really came to the party. Perhaps a lot of pressure on them. This was the game that they were perhaps looking at in terms of, of getting to the quarterfinals. They needed to beat the West Indies. So certainly a lot of work will have to be done by the Bangladesh team now to get to the quarterfinals. Well, Dwayne, when I saw West Indies batting, I thought it was the start of the game. And I went to the bathroom and, and then I came back and I heard Tony Coase just saying about a few runs to win. So I looked at the television again and I saw a target of 59. So I was wondering if it was really Bangladesh or it was maybe one of the minnows. But what went wrong? Because really and truly, I did not see the, the destruction of Bangladesh, if I may say so by just three bowlers, Ben, um, the captain, Darren Sammy, and Roach. Yeah, well, Wasn't it was a combination of poor batting and an excellent bowling, and also brilliant captaincy by Darren Sammy. Um, ben opened the bowling as usual. He bowled one over, had nine runs taken off it, and he was removed from the attack. Sammy came in, and from there, both Sammy and Roach really bowled well. Backed up by the fillers, a few spectacular catches, um, but I think it was Roach who had one or two unplayable deliveries initially, and then Sammy was pretty tight, and uh, he was back to the old Sammy, because from what we've seen from Sammy recently, I don't know if it's the pressure of the captaincy, he has not been bowling very well, but he came to the party in this game, and he got some assistance from the fielders, and then Ben came back into the attack, and really um, kind of wrapped up the, the tail to some extent. So it was a clinical bowling performance by the West Indians. But you have to say about five of the Bangladeshi batsmen actually gifted their wickets away, looking to play shots perhaps that were not really there. Um, but all in all, um, a good display um, by the West Indians. The captaincy of Sami, he had the right changes. He took out Ben early on. He brought back Roach. Um, just when you know, someone felt that he perhaps would have brought in Nikita Miller, and that wasn't to be. So, a good performance by the West Indians. Well, I suppose um, if you are Bangladeshi, how many 60,000 plus there? <laughs> the commentator said that tickets were like gold dust. Gold is extremely expensive on the world market. And um, I suppose a, a spectator who went to the bar, and there might have been 30, 40 people there. When he, when he returned, he would have seen the West Indies batting. Yeah, we, we saw some evidence of, you know, some of the spectators throwing some stuff onto the field um, when they had finished bat, when they got bowlers for 59. So it would have been very disappointing for the crowd, especially since, you know, the court said that, um, you know, they were going to be the West Indies and so on, you know, Bangladesh rated number eight, West Indies number nine. So that crowd would be would have been very disappointed. I think a lot of pressure was put on the Bangladesh team, probably unnecessary pressure. Um, as I mentioned before, this game was perhaps the one they were looking at in terms of getting to the quarterfinals, and they will have a lot of work to do from here. They are an improving side; they have improved over the years. But certainly, I don't think they're in the same class as the West Indies, although they're rated um, just one step above the West Indies. Well, again, as I keep telling you, I, it's a computer thing. It's a modern day thing. If you play a little more often than I play, the tennis world reflects that. Uh, there's no question Roger Federer is in the top four. And, you know, he didn't play for a week or two and somebody else played often. So you climb up the ranking. So I suspect it's the nature of things, but really it doesn't reflect the quality of it. Because I still argue. There is no way Australia is nothing other than number three in the world. So I think most of these things are basically, well, in keeping with the trend, it's, 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 it's made competitive that way. And I suppose it's good for marketing. Now, um, England suffered that um, shock defeat again against Ireland. So you have two of the contenders in the group, England and Bangladesh, needing to win when they meet. And this should be a pretty interesting game. Yes, um, definitely England going down to to Ireland. Um, if you look at the England bowling attack, it has not really been living up to expectations. 
especially in these types of conditions. Um, Anderson hasn't been able to swing the ball. Stroud brought, brought to me, not really back to full fitness. So that game between England and Bangladesh will be a very important game, um, especially for Bangladesh. I still think England um, will have the edge in terms of qualifying, although they will have to play South Africa next. South Africa, to me, will quali- qualify as number one in that particular zone. But really, four teams um, I see going through there would be South Africa, um, India, um, England, and the West Indies. Bangladesh was always going to be fighting with the West Indies for the fourth spot. Having said that, it's a bit early still. Anything can happen because if Ireland could have beaten England, um, you never know what can really happen with the remaining game. So it's a very interesting zone. I remember we had a conversation um, a few weeks ago and we were saying that perhaps this World Cup would have been boring. But it's not that boring if you have the lower teams, the the minnows, really upsetting the so-called bigger teams. We saw um, yesterday as well. Pakistan had a scare against Canada. So I think it's pretty good for the competition so far. And I think what is interesting, when West Indies is, win- is winning, nothing is boring. Everything is exciting. Because you, you have a, at least something to rally around. So I would quite agree with you that um, we are invigorated. I, I looked at England. I really impressed with um, their batting. And um, I hope that they would see that they could do it without Anderson or Broad. I quite agree with you. That looked like up and down bowling. Anybody can beat that about the place. And to me, Yadi looks a better bet as well as um, Swan. I would think if England could find a third one, they'll do better. But to me, I don't see um, Anderson up and down. Yes, he did well in the test matches, but that's a different game completely and broad. I don't see them out in anybody who, well, they look very ordinary indeed. So England will certainly have to find somebody who can bowl a decent um, number four, ten overs, and number five, well, generally use four or five bo- bowlers, but I mean five bowlers, but really and truly, two of the bowlers don't look like they're going to out any serious batsmen. Um, India, the, that, that um, let's call it tie or drawn, whatever you want to call it, against England. Um, India still top of the table? I would think so. Um, it was a test for them, the match against England. Um, but it's always, always good when you have a tough game. Um, it shows you where your weaknesses are. And one would have to see that in terms of the bowling as well, the Indians are probably not as strong as we think. I see nothing wrong with the batting. They have someone like Patan batting at number number seven or number eight. So it's a very strong batting lineup. But I would think in this zone, um, it's going to be a very interesting game between the Indians and the South Africans. Um, and that perhaps would determine who will top the zone. Are so you I not saying West India Indies going to prove it? Um, from, from our zone. Are you not saying West Indies going to... Because uh, to me, um, if Chris Gale starts to swing his bat about the place and is on target, I mean, some of these have that uh, spinners, as he demonstrated in uh, Sri Lanka, th- they could be murdered. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm just saying... If Chris Gale gets on target, these slow bowlers could be banged all about the field. He has that capacity, and he has demonstrated in the past. Yes, um, Chris Gale and Pollard, I think these two guys are key. These are guys who can take the, way, take the game away from the opposition. But let's not get carried away. Bangladesh is a, certainly a different opposition from um, India. Um, or even or even England. I think the West Indies will have a very good chance against England. I'm really looking forward to see that game. As you mentioned, these guys like Anderson and, and Broad, I don't think they will trouble someone like Chris Gale. Perhaps they will have to open a bowling with someone like Graham Swan. I think if the teams are doing their homework, they would notice that perhaps it is better to open a bowling with a spinner against the West Indies because you have someone like Devon Smith who is almost clueless now against off spin bowling. And we have Chris Gale, who is a very suspect starter. He doesn't really start well, especially against spin bowling. So I think most of the teams will be looking to perhaps open a bowling with spin against the West Indies. But yes, the West Indies, I believe, is a very dangerous side, like Pakistan from the, from the other zone. And if Chris Gale gets going, 
as well as someone like Sawan, who looked good in the last game as well, um, got getting 49 runs. I think, um, you know, we still perhaps are a little bit stronger than a lot of people think. And I think it's a good thing for West Indies that people are not re- really rating the West Indies. So I think um, there's not much pressure on them. They have nothing to lose, really. Well, we keep our fingers crossed. I, I, I would love, I still, as I argue with people, um, yes, South Africa look a powerful team with Dave Stern and fellas, but I don't see India. I mean, Sachin Tendulkar is the most composed of them all. Verinda Sewag is like Gail. He could make a hundred as well as he could make a duck. And um, Yuvraj don't really perform all the time. So to me, the two spinners, if Pollard and, and Gail and others who can hit the ball, do what they could do well. I don't know that India is going to pose any great trouble to, to West Indies. They have not done it in the past in any event. I think West Indies have, uh, even at their weakest, done well against India. So really and truly to me, as I said to people, they have already lost to South, South Africa. I really don't. I see this as an open World Cup. I thought I picked England to win, and I still believe that they'll do well. But uh, really and truly, as you quite rightly said, West Indies look like they can spring a few surprises. If they do that, maybe in the second round they could be a dangerous contender. And from the other group, New Zealand, well, they won handsomely. Australia, uh, when will you think the, win- the winning streak of Australia would end? Well, I think they're still a very good one, the team. I don't know if they can go all the way uh, without Michael Hussey. I think they still leave it open. They need to bring a replacement for Bollinger. So probably Hussey will come in. Um, I, I don't think the other zone is as competitive as the one with the West Indies. Um, perhaps the biggest threat to Australia would be Sri Lanka, although the Pakistanis are playing pretty well. Um, they are a dangerous side also, and they would have beaten Sri Lanka. Um, so we, we've got to wait until the Australians come up against um, perhaps Sri Lanka to see what will happen there. But teams like New Zealand, I don't think uh, they have the, the, the ability to beat Australia because, as I mentioned, they're still uh, a pretty good um, all wrong side. And I think they have the two express placements in Brett Lee and um, the, the other guy. Um, they have two very good fast bowlers. So I think the Australians perhaps will be favored to come out on top in that zone. When they reach the quarterfinals, it would be a very different story because if the West Indies finish number four in their zone and Australians win their zone, um, the Australians would be pretty nervous going into that quarterfinal. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed that the West Indies will avoid Australia until the final. <laughs> if that is possible, <laughs> that may not be possible. But doing thanks a lot. And again, I'm sure you are having a better day as a result of the tonic of the West Indies victory this morning. And again, let's congratulate Darren Sammy and the entire West Indies team and hope that they can continue to build upon today's success. Uh, it is now a quarter to eight, and this is Spice Morning. Uh, we certainly without some of the guests who promised that they would have been with us this morning. Nevertheless, we certainly find some substitutes, and uh, we're going to be back in a moment with much more. Stay with us. Does bad weather bring back flashes of the past? Does depression and feelings of hopelessness make you want to give up on life? Does uncontrollable anger, frustration and stress push you to commit violent crimes? It's okay to be scared. You're not losing your mind. Suicide is such a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Once you go down that road, there's no turning back. When tempers flare, think twice, walk away. Let's all get involved. Talk to someone today about the way you feel. Call the Legal Aid and Counseling Clinic or the Ministry of Social Services. A message from the Wellness Committee. We need to talk. I see your wife with all her eyes black and blue and bruises all over her body. Is this the way you chose to show love? Look, if you look at your wife with love, violence would never come to your mind. And don't blame alcohol and stress. You chose to do it. Man. I used to see my father beat up my mother. Even though he used to hurt me, I used to like to see when they make up. Because I feel beating was part of love. Man, how you could think so? Somebody ever hit you? Hit me? Yeah, but you're hitting your wife. I know how she feel, you know. I, I want to stop. I-, I just don't know how. You really want to stop? Well, I'm going to tell you how. 
call the Ministry of Social Development Domestic Violence Unit. Or you can call Legal Aid and Counseling. Somebody there is waiting to help you. The proceeding was a message from the Ministry of Social Development. Stop playing with our planet. You should be protecting it. No more playing. All right, it is now 11 minutes to um, 8, and this is the start of a weekend. It's Friday, March the 3rd, and let's say good morning to the women of the nation. And again, we congratulate those of you who are engaged in your own business. And um, we could think about Spice Isle Plantation. It's a group of women that have done wonders, manufacturing perfumes and what have you and they operate at the craft center in Tanti next to Tropicana and they have done a wonderful job in promoting local hubs and many other things and if you have not visited them I suggest that you take time off sometime during the course of the month or in the future to see what they do and you'll find a number of wonderful things there are great gifts that you can purchase for friends and Grenadians and family members living abroad and certainly I'm sure they will find it very impressive. And there's, there's Veronica's vision on the western side, Concord area, also a place you can get many things um, locally produced too, and uh, the variety is tremendous there, and again, we say good morning to you know, the manager and others there. It's good to always be part of that. Well, it's a wonderful family too, and it's always good to engage them. So we have with us this morning, Mr. Lecret, certainly no stranger. Time has certainly gone by, accelerated to the speed that uh, he's telling me this morning that Happy Hill Secondary School, it is going to commemorate its 30th anniversary. And I could remember that school many years ago. It used to be Bernadette Bailey. And uh, someone else is going to join him. So we're going to just uh, make some, um, we, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to have the other person, who I think is Martin Alexander, to join Mr. Lecret here this morning to give us an insight into the Happy Hill Secondary School. 30 years and going strong and maybe even stronger. And uh, we're going to have two, two of the teachers with us this morning. And let's take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment. Do you want a special help from God that enables you to recognize your sexuality as beautiful and good? Do you want a gift that will enable you to respect your sexuality and your fertility? Control your sexual powers, your sexual thoughts and desires, and leave your gift of sexuality the way God intended? That gift is called chastity. Chastity is sexual goodness, sexual self-control, it means never using another person. Chastity is never easy, but real men and real women practice it. Real men and real women know that their bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Real men and real women know that chastity is the best preparation for marriage and that faithfulness in marriage makes for happy families. Ask God to help you to practice chastity in your life. Checking property, life and security. Bushfire set intentionally, what insanity. Bushfires can cause millions in losses annually and are often caused by careless or intentional actions indictable under the law. Forests are life-giving, save them. A message from the Fire Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force and the Caribbean Open Trade Support. Right, and let's welcome our two guests, and great to have you, gentlemen. It's part of the Happy Hill team, and they'll tell you a team that is striving and certainly a successful team. So, great to have you, gentlemen. 
Um, Martin has a spectacular tie and shirt this morning. Uh, Martin told me this is the Happy Hill, what? The color. School color red. School color. Yeah, right. All right. And um, my dear friend, Mr. Lacret, um, has the white. So at one moment, as I said, I thought it was Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> he has a black pants here. <laughs> but this is Grenada and this is Happy Hill. So nice to have you. Good congratulations on your 30th anniversary. I suppose you were telling me a while ago that it's a one year, a one year process of reflecting and I suppose mm -hmm. uh, um, even maybe refueling in terms of the future so you want to give us a sense as to take us back I remember happy secondary school was burned at Bailey first mm -hmm. you want to give us a brief synopsis you would have been going to school then yeah, but Mr. I suppose was a past student of the school right so you are yeah. oh, you yeah. were the, you were the, the, yeah. well, um, the school opened in um, 1980 mm -hmm. Se September uh, 9th, 1980 um, school started off with roughly about 150 students. As you know, the school was named um, Bonanda Bailey after that um, event at Queen's Park. Um, it was supposed to be a junior secondary school, but after I think they opened it to a full-fledged secondary school. Um, the school is known for the technical program. Together with um, Boca Secondary School, I think that was the only two schools in St. George's that were offering programs like um, needlework, food and nutrition, technical drawing, um, woodwork, and so forth. Um, they have since added a number of subjects to the curriculum. I think we have our curriculum is now 50, is 50 20, so um, around 30, 31. 31, 31 subjects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are known um, in the area of sports. We have produced um, sports and discipline persons like um, Ricky Charles. We have um, yeah, Ricky, Ricky Curry Charles, who yes, plays for Grenada. Plays for Grenada, um, Fimba Williams. Also play for Grenada. Jackie and Maureen. Jackie and Maureen. I remember, she was a good runner. But you would mostly find us in the area of technical. Technical. Yeah, we're known for technical. So you you pr you keep producing skills for the country. Yes. Which is so need so yeah, needed. Of course, eh? of course. Right, and um, I suppose you would recall some of the. I remember, you know, I still remember. He tells me thirty years ago, um, Mr. Harris was his name, the gentleman from Mount Morrison. Mm -hmm. What yes. was his name? Mm -hmm. He was principal. He died. Well, yeah, about a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was our first um, principal. Principal, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, Mr. Harris. Right. And, um, it's a wonderful man. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I think um, one of the most famous principals that passed through Happy Second Institute would be Mr. Macfield. Oh, Hudson. Mr. Hudson Macfield. Of yeah. course, well, we have Mr. Thomas now. And we've only had about four, four principals, I think. Yeah, yeah you had Ms. Curtin. Yeah, Mr. Oh, Curtin. Curtin yeah. Yeah. Carol and Twine as well. Carol and Twine. Yeah. And we yeah. have yeah. Mr. Thomas, yeah. Daniel yeah. Thomas now. Good. So, 30 years, five principals, and yeah. I suppose a lot of teachers. Yes. So, you have started, you started last year. Started Happy Hill in 2000. No, I'm talking about the celebrations. celebrations. The celebrations, okay, yeah. yeah. You want yeah. to give us a sense of some of the activities and how things progressed? Okay. Um, the activity started in September. Um, we had a few activities for the first term. Um, because I was not at the school for the first term, um, I was at West Hall Secondary, um, I could tell you about the activities that we have planned for this term and uh, as well as the third term. Um, this term we're going to have, well tomorrow actually, we're going to have a gospel concert. Right, we have been planning that for the longest time and um, it's going to um, get off the ground tomorrow at about 7 o'clock p.m. Um, which was coordinated by some, some of the past students on the committee as well as uh, Mrs. Philip. Um, Sometime in the third term, we plan to have um, an emulation ceremony, and um, that emulation ceremony is going to be um, embodied with uh, past students, past teachers. Um, we're going to um, recognize them for their contribution to the school, okay, and make them feel appreciated. And if there are any other significant persons maybe in the community that would have contributed to the life and the development of the institution over the past 30 years, we're also going to recognize them and acknowledge them for the work that they have done. Um, we have also planned um, a family fund day. Um, which would entail the community, I believe, and uh, the cruise and a night cruise. You know, the relaxation part of it is always key. Mm -hmm. You know, all work and no play makes Jack <laughs> an extremely dull boy. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to create some kind of equilibrium with the activities that we're going to have um, for the third term. Yeah? So the gospel concert 
tonight. Mm -hmm. It's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Yeah, Saturday. Saturday night. Yeah. Where would it be staged? In at the school. school. At the school. Yeah. At the school. Actually, um, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be um last week Saturday, mm -hmm. but due to the um the weather, rain, the weather mm -hmm. we had to postpone it. So persons who um were supposed to come last week, and we just notifying them now that it's actually going to be this week, this Saturday. Um, just Tickets add that was still then. Yeah. No, we didn't sell any no, tickets. No, we didn't get um, to. um, the price is um ten dollars for adults, five dollars for students. Yeah. Um, just to add to um, Mr. Lockett, um, some of the activities that we had. Um, we've been having every end of month. We've been having a past student line at the school, where you know um, we past students come back and you meet persons that would have gone to school before you or gone to school after you and so forth. You know, um, it's an opportunity to also give them information. So um. It started um, in November, so every end of the month, it, all of our students come together and we lime at the school, we socialize and so forth. Um, we're having one at um, the end of this month, and so um, we're asking all of our students to come out at the end of the month to lime at the school. There's also a process of raising funds and so forth for the school. Um, another thing that we're planning to have, we plan to have a magazine, print a magazine mm -hmm. at the end of the um, all the celebration and so forth. Yeah. Um, the even though Mr. Lacker talk about the um, awarding the past students and so forth, mm -hmm. we're looking at doing it as a um, uh, past students dinner and ball, right? So, as you said, we're gonna um, award persons. We're looking at the f in the fund day also. We're looking to have all the persons come back, past students come back, and you go back to your original house. And we have a kind of sporting event because you know you're still loyal to your house. Right. I suppose um, what school you Which went house? to? Um, Red. I try to remember the name of Happy House. Um, it's Compton, Compton, Parrot, Parrot Spencer, Griffith. and Griffith. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So the, Mr. Spencer is the name I really mm -hmm. wanted to get. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. <laughs> and Parrot would have been P. Wax. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dennis yeah. Parrot. Yeah. Yes, yes. Right. He was one of the vibrant people mm -hmm. yes, yes. in Happy Hill then. Mm -hmm. so that's going to be, that's nice. You recreate that, um, yeah. I suppose, that early years of engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you, the teachers, are going to be singing in the gospel concert? Yes. Students yes, yes. are going to invite group. Give us a sense of what we're going to come to listen to. Well, there are going to be a lot of um, gospel artists from mm -hmm. across the nation okay. that, that will be taking part. Um, cross-section is not denominational. There's going to be a cross-section of gospel artists taking part. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to have some dramatic pieces. Um, there are going to be some cultural aspects that are going to be involved in the concert. And uh, we have quite, <laughs> quite uh, uh, some characters and stuff uh, that's also going to be doing a dramatic piece. Um, the title of the gospel concert, though, um, the overarching theme, is um, the greatest love story ever told. Okay. And um, the play that the teachers are going to put on is going to be centered around that theme yeah, for that night. So it's going to be quite a, a wealth of activities as for that night. Roger yeah. going to sing? Roger going to play his guitar? I, I, I am sure that yes. Mr. Williams would not miss that opportunity we have to staff um, choir. express his talent. And the staff choir, our staff, oh my God. <laughs> can <Yeah>. sing. <laughs> yeah, for the longest time. Yeah. 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 So it's quite a show. We want to just uh, admonish the community, past mm. students all over the nation um, who are looking at this program this morning. Come out and support your alma mater. And tell your friends. Yeah, and tell your friends. Tell your friends. Yeah. 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 We're going to have an excellent and, time. Uh, without any doubt, it's another avenue of raising funds. Definitely. Yeah. The multiplicity of things that yes, yes. the state do really fund for the school. Yeah. Sure. I like the way that you put it. Yes. Yeah. And it's also <laughs> opportunity to um, meet old friends right. that yeah. you would have went to school with yeah. and so forth. Yeah. 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 And it's a nice atmosphere. I like Happy Hill. It's like a little, little campus university. Yeah. You know. It is a little campus. Yeah. 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 We love our right. campus. So yeah. well. And if I may interject too, I mean, um, as we kind of close off, contrary to popular opinion, um, there are a lot of good things taking place at Happy Hill. Um, but why you say popular opinion? Two people um, make noise there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the no, that a, no because, the top, because sometimes you know right. there is a quote unquote a kind of stigma that's attached to certain schools. Yeah. And um, contrary to popular opinion and to the opinion of John Public, mm -hmm. we have an excellent core of teachers that we believe mm -hmm. um, are dedicated and committed um, to uh, uh, ensuring that our students are academically sound and also uh, uh, in every other discipline that they're sound so that when they leave they can be more productive citizens of the country. Oh, yeah. We have an excellent principal who is strong and going strong. Um,
love him. We appreciate the work that he's doing at the school and the time and the energy that he puts into um, the institution as, as the instructional leader. And, um, and our curriculum is just an extremely diverse curriculum that caters for the needs um, of students who are inclined academically and even those who cannot even manage mainstream academia. So um, Happy Hill is a place to be. Yeah, well, do you dare I know you from very young. <laughs> <laughs> excellent debater, excellent spokesman. Yeah. Yeah. Preaches yeah. extremely well, <laughs> committed to it. Mm -hmm. uh, meeting Martin for the first time, uh, yeah. you know. Past student and past teacher. Student and teacher mm -hmm. and I know Roger Frenchy yeah. Yeah. very well. Yeah. So, And I know Mr. Thomas extremely yeah, Mr. well, Thomas gentlemen and uh, gentlemen. So I don't think you should ever say by popular. There's not, in Grenada, five, six people make noise. They get up <laughs> to some talk show and I say, Generally, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't normally say what I would want to say, but um, let me put it this way. There are trouble and there are problems in each institution. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, the people go there, diverse culture, mm -hmm. diverse backgrounds and so forth. So I, I, you have been doing an excellent job in, I see you debating. I see you in young leaders. I see you in everything. So <laughs> you, you must be, you must be progressive. Everybody can't win. They're just that's one true. winner. Yeah, that's <laughs> so true. Yes, yes. Sometimes you're well prepared, but it's just a pointer to separate yes. you. So um, let me ask you two quick other questions. The students' reaction to the anniversary, um, the, 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 the staff, meaning the teachers, mm -hmm. or the faculty, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Good, good, it's gelling, it's good excellent, interest, yeah. participation. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. The faculty is on board. I mean, the male faculty teachers have been practicing for weeks now, mm -hmm. pra practicing their songs and the dramatic pieces and so on. They're on board, they're excited about it. Uh, I mean, they're bringing all their energies together, and I mean, it's just going to be a bomb on Saturday. The students, I think that they're really proud to be a part of, an, uh, of the institution, of, of an institution that is 30 years old and going and looking at the wealth of um, um, product that the school has produced. I mean, because from time to time we have assemblies and we will bring back past students mm -hmm. who have prominent positions in society and so on, and even those who are abroad that came back wanted to see what the, how the school is doing and so on and to give back to the school. I think they're really proud to see that um, this is what Happy Hill Secondary has produced over the past okay. 30 years and they want to be a part of that. To, you know, cadre of people, I guess, as much when they leave and also make their mark in society. Yeah. It's about one of your faults is that you don't tell us a lot about what you're doing. We have other institutions who frequent not only this program but other program. And I yeah, suppose we, that we're working on that. Yeah, I think maybe you need to yeah, talk a little more of mm -hmm. some of these some wonderful thing. things that you yeah, do yeah. because, again, you have such a diverse curriculum, mm -hmm. you know, would work. Um, drawing, yeah. nutrition, food and nutrition. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not doing well in academic, mm -hmm. you certainly could find a skill area. Yes, definitely. Just, so. definitely. Just to give you um, my mm. personal experience, I um, entered the school in 1990. At the time the school was celebrating the, um, the 10th anniversary. And to be very honest, I did not choose Happy Hill. You know you have to make a list of schools that you wanted to go to. Mm. I did not choose Happy Hill. But I always had an interest in drawing and so forth. And well, you know, um, when they say they choose a school, I, I choose um, GBSS, PVC, and so mainstream schools. Mm -hmm. And then I, I passed for Happy Secondary School. Um, no, I live in Fon I, live, I was living in Fontaine all the time. And I remember that first day of school. <coughs> I went there, and what I was expecting, it, it was more. It was more than what I expected. And I've never regretted that day mm -hmm. since I entered that institution. And I think, um, as Mr. Lacker said, most people judge schools on um, probably their... Um, what people see and you know um, it, it they're not recognized as the other schools and so forth but when you come there if you want a well rounded curriculum I advise anybody to send a child to happy secondary school we cater for every single body and I went and I, I, I was not academically inclined to be very honest and I taught there I did a technical program I excelled in it and now I'm back there teaching technical drawing yeah we have yeah. quite a number of past students on staff yeah. Yeah. So, I believe, yeah. So, um, I mean, let's put it this way. Um, uh, I, I think the shortcoming would be that you're not, we're not blowing the trumpet. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know yeah. this gentleman for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and you, you, let's, let's put it this way. You would frequent a GBSS or PBC mm -hmm. or SAS. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, you know, I see the people. You look at Grenville Secondary School. Mm -hmm. And uh, incrementally, they are catching up with the big names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But people don't want to go back and examine and see how many wonderful academic yes, yes, personalities yes, yes, yes. they have produced, sports people. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, so, so really, Andrew, as I say, it's, it's more of a perception thing. Yeah. 
yes. rather than a reality check. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that, that you gentlemen have chosen to come to us this morning and share the good news. And uh, we want to congratulate uh, the students, the, the principal, staff, and students of the Happy Secondary School observing their 30th anniversary and they're choosing to do it over one year. Yes, yes. yes. Right, and uh, one of the big events, teachers are going to be performing, others are going to be performing, and students, you get a chance to poke at the teachers. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. You used to do it, <laughs> poke yes. at the teachers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how it feels, unfortunately. <laughs> right. Now they have a chance to do it to you, Yes. and they said, okay, yes. 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 <laughs> they humming, they don't know the chorus. Yes. <laughs> just, mm, mm, <laughs> Some more not moving enough. That's correct. I know the the digital um, um, the cell phone or yeah. whatever you want to call it. You mm -hmm. can film it to show yeah, you yeah. how. Yeah, you we know. We know. We we'll probably end up on YouTube or Facebook or something. That's like correct. That. Yeah. <laughs> so open your mouth, learn the words, <laughs> <laughs> do a good job. Yes. Well, what a pleasure it was to have Thank you, Mr. Robert. Robert. Yes. Thanks a lot for okay. coming, and, and let me wish you good luck. It's five dollars for, for children. children. $10. And ten dollars for adults, so we want to encourage starts families. At, uh, it starts at seven. Starts. It starts at seven, mm -hmm. yes. and normally it's a two hour, yeah. two hour and a half show. And yes. um, again, try to make it contribute to the school in some way possible. And again, bring the family and enjoy what should be a wonderful Saturday evening of gospel singing. Ten minutes after the hour, this is Spice Morning. We're going to take a break, and we we'll come back with more in a moment. <laughs> If you spend two hours in a room where someone's smoking, you'll inhale the equivalent of four cigarettes. My dad shared an office with a chain smoker, eight hours a day, five days a week, for more than ten years. Not surprisingly, he died of lung cancer. Have you? Take your family and friends out for a treat. Come to Sunset City Food Festival this Saturday and every last Saturday in each month from 5 p.m. Come and enjoy Oil Down, Tanya Log, Manish Waters, Cowskin Sauce, Bakes and Fish Cake, Wild Meat, Fruit Juices and everything local. Come out, meet and greet and have a good time enjoying great local foods in a warm and peaceful environment. Music, a live band. Sunset City Food Festival, Diamond Street, Victoria, this and every last Saturday. I'm looking to see you there. Stomp out careless or intentional bushfires, dead out. Youths, hunters, smokers, let's prevent bushfires. Here's why. Yeah, yeah, bushfires. The shoreline's wet, crops should be bushfires. Can eat the food, scarcity. Threatened by your diversity. Cause water shortage, water calamity. Bushfires, water sheds deplete. Water quality, threatened property, life and security. Bushfires set intentionally, what insanity. Bushfires can cause millions in losses annually and are often caused by careless or intentional actions indictable under the law. Forests are life-giving. Save them. A message from the Fire Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force and the Caribbean Open Trade Support. Does bad weather bring back flashes of the past? Does depression and feelings of hopelessness make you want to give up on life? Does uncontrollable anger, frustration and stress push you to commit violent crimes? It's okay to be scared. You're not losing your mind. Suicide is such a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Once you go down that road, there's no turning back. When tempers flare, think twice. Walk away. Let's all get involved. Talk to someone today about the way you feel. Call the Legal Aid and Counseling Clinic or the Ministry of Social Services. A message from the Wellness Committee. We need to talk. I see your wife with all she eyes black and blue and bruises all over her body. Is this the way you chose to show love? Look, if you look at your wife with love, violence would never come to your mind. And don't blame alcohol and stress. You chose to do it. Man, I used to see my father beat up my mother. Even though he used to hurt me, I used to like to see when they make up. Because I feel beating was part of love. Man, how you could think so? Somebody ever hit you? Hit me? Yeah, but you're hitting your wife. I know how she feel, you know. I, I want to stop. I, I just don't know how. You really want to stop? Well, I gonna tell you how. Call the Ministry of Social Development Domestic Violence Unit. Or you can call Legal Aid and Counseling. 
somebody there is waiting to help you. The proceeding was a message from the Ministry of Social Development. Stop playing with our planet. You should be protecting it. No more playing. Do you want a special help from God that enables you to recognize your sexuality as beautiful and good? Do you want a gift that will enable you to respect your sexuality and your fertility, sexual powers, your sexual thoughts and desires, and leave your gift of sexuality the way God intended? That gift is called chastity. Chastity is sexual goodness, sexual self-control. It means never using another person. Chastity is never easy, but real men and real women practice it. Real men and real women know that their bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Real men and real women know that chastity is the best preparation for marriage and that faithfulness in marriage makes for happy families. Ask God to help you to practice chastity in your life. Right and let's turn to some happy young ladies from the Anglican High School. They are the young leaders, a part of the young leaders. Mm -hmm and they are here to tell us about their project. It is part of the RBTT Young Leaders Project, Grenada. It's a Caribbean event. The Anglican High School, they have done exceedingly well over the years. Uh, good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. You have won it many times. Yes. yes. Right, right, right. I can't remember the many years, but how many times have you won? Seven times. Seven times? Yes. Number one? Yes. All right, 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 right. How's Miss Thomas? She's okay. <laughs> Alright, so let me see. Uh, your name is? Crystalyn Connaught. Crystalyn Connaught. And Ramona Bruno. Ramona Bruno. Right, so I get it right. And? Rhea Chance. And Rhea Chance. Good. So they are the, they are part of the group. Okay. How large is the group? We have 43 members. 43 members? Yes. Good. And they all active? Yes. Good. <laughs> so who leads the group? Me. You the I'm president? The president yes. Good. Is this an easy job? Well, at times. At times. <laughs> yes. Rhea gives trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Right. And you are what? In the I'm group? just a group member. Just a group member. Yeah. And Rhea? Well, I'm just a group member. Well, right. we are in the same crew, okay. which more focus on water for living, which has a lot to do with the amniotic fluid and water in humans. Right, well, they brought me some questions, so I'm going to ask them some <laughs> of the questions they brought me. And uh, I suppose we can start with the theme. Yes. I'm sure there's a theme. Yes. Mm -hmm. right, so you want to tell me what the theme? Sustaining life, securing our future. Do you want to see by yourself? <laughs> you by yourself? Water beyond the surface, sustaining life, securing our future. And she said it perfect? Yes. <laughs> 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 right, so this is the theme the group is working on. Yes, sir. Right, and um, tell us how you're developing the theme. Well, we have been looking at water in all forms, including water at birth. And what we did, we broke up the, um, the members into groups. Some of us are focused on the water cycle, uses of water, pollution and treatment of water, and also water conservation. I suppose you are producing a portfolio on your findings. Yes, yeah. And this, it's been going well so far? Yes, yes it yes. has. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, um, we need to focus on some of it. You can't focus on all of it today, so <laughs> give us a sense of um, um, which form of water are we going to be focusing. Well, we would more like to focus on water at birth, in the mother, water at water birth, and water in humans. Okay, so I have water in me. 
Yes, yes, a lot. Yes. 70%. 70% of me is water. Yes. yes. Associate Matsula alone holds up 75%. All right, all right. So I'm learning. Yeah. yeah. I thought I was just muscles. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, uh, we're going to talk, um, talk a little about, um, let's see what you have to tell me about water at birth. You just give me an explanation about water at birth. Well, we have learned about the amniotic fluid, which is a protective liquid um, consisting mostly of, which wa of water, which the um, fetus floats around in. Um, it is contained in the amniotic sac, which is also known as the water bag. Um, it helps the developing baby to move around in the womb, which helps for proper um, growth structure, bone structure, and it helps the lungs to develop properly. And it protects the baby from injury, cushioning outside blows and uh, sudden movements. Uh, you have learned anything about water. Uh, what did you learn about water as a result of this process? Uh, water, water at birth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, water at birth is basically um, um, uh, in a tub of, of warm water. Mm -hmm. But um, the theory behind this is is that water birth is the baby the theory behind water birth is that the baby has been in the amniotic sac for, for nine months and birthing into a similar environment is is gentler for the baby and less stressful for the mother. Okay, so I suppose future parents are learning from your experience. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we pay a lot of attention. Before that project, you were paying this attention to water. I know you may be doing it chemistry or physics or whatever it is. <laughs> but not, yeah, really. Not, not really. really. Not really. So this has sort of opened your eyes. I yes. see it, yes. To make us know how important water is mm -hmm. and how and how it can help us in our everyday life and everything. Right. Uh, so you would present, you get a sense that the group two is a weakness, the, the importance yes. of water in the human being. more aware of it. Right. And um, there's a question here I think you, you give me which I want to ask you about. Uh, are there any situations which are not ideal for water birth? Yes, there are. If the mother has herpes, um, okay. she should not have a water birth because herpes can be very easily transmitted in water. Also, if the person has been diagnosed with excessive bleeding or maternal infection. Also, if the person is having multiple births, such so as twins and triplets, and if the baby is a premature, they should not have a water birth. You want to nurse it? Huh? You were going to nurse No. <laughs> Anyone I don't going like the sight of blood that much. Not really. okay. So nobody with medical interest here? No. Okay, so that's just basically. Well, we're coming back to our, uh, one of the things you mentioned a while ago. Um, you'll have to explain it to us first because, again, some of us are hearing it for the first time. Amniotic fluid. What's that? Well, um, the amniotic fluid originates from the secretions through the umbilical cord. Um, about two weeks after fertilization, it fills up with mostly water, which contains carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, phospholipids, urea, and electrolytes. And all of this helps the, um, the fetus to grow healthily. And also included in the amniotic fluid are all skin cells of the baby, which have nowhere to go but into its bath. Um, the baby would be inhaling and uh, swallowing all of this um, through urine. Um, by the 36 week, they are usually around a liter of amniotic fluid. And by this time, it's made up mostly of fetal urine. And the amniotic fluid is inhaled and exhaled by the fetus. It is essential that fluid be breathed into the lungs in order for them to develop um, properly and normally. Well, you are here to educate us, which you're doing. But I suppose the project entails a lot more public awareness. Yes. Yes. What about your, you have about how many, about 600 students at the Anglican High School? Approximately. Approximately. Yeah, approximately. Um, you're getting your fellow students to also learn more about some of the things that you are learning about. Yes, yes, we have a lot of activities which involve STEM and they have been supporting us so far. Okay. Um, what about the principal, the teachers? Uh, yes, they have all been very, <laughs> very, very supportive. So it's a, it's a Anglian High School family interest. Yes. yes. Right, right. So you're motivated. Yes, we are. Right. Uh, 
have you undertaken projects other than being here this morning that people can get a sense of what you're doing? What are some of the projects? I know last Friday you were in Tanti. Yes, uh, yes. You want to well, share some experience as to how this what went Friday. and what you were <laughs> disseminating to people? Well, basically what we had last week, Friday, and we're having it the first and last Friday of every month. It's called the Waters Friday. We have Lambie Waters, Fish Waters, Manish Waters, Crayfish Waters. And we use this activity to re get our message out there to people about um, water conservation and not polluting water. But basically we wanted to come up with the idea of a new function and we looked at the spot. Uh, we came up with the idea and then we spoke to <coughs> Mr. Brazan and Mrs. Brazan, the owners. And they, they helped us to run off with the idea and so far it has been going well. Great, and um, you were able to disseminate literature to people so they can yes. uh, use the we mic. We give out messages mm -hmm. and also we use the mic and we speak out, uh, we give um, water conservation tips and all of that. During the song intervals. Yes. During the song intervals. Yes, <laughs> and we also have old and new music to water your soul. <laughs> old and new music to water your soul. Yes. So you're getting everything. And yeah, everything. <laughs> and we're also trying to catch them people when they come from work on evenings, you know, they can come over and relax themselves. Good. And you, you have also some, I see you talk about uh, the number of glasses of water we should be consuming. Uh, well, um, well, I have here that uh, a human being should drink at least six to eight glasses of water a day. But if you're exercising, you should drink 10 to 12 glasses. Water. How many you drink a day? Can't check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know um, many people who, for whatever reason, assume that they can't drink. I said, I drink a lot of water, I don't know for what reason, but I drink a lot of water. You drink That's a lot good. of water? Yes, I try my best. Oh. I like to drink water. <laughs> you average how many a day you would take? I don't know. Sometimes when I'm playing netball and stuff, I would drink a lot more water. Right. But on a daily basis, I probably drink a boy four or five glasses of water because um, it's kind of really hot mm. nowadays yeah. but I try to drink more if I could. You keep a tab on look at four in the morning. <laughs> you're just approximate. No, no, you just don't. drink as fast as you're getting thirsty. All right, right. And you believe you're meeting the, the yes. accepted number. All right. Um, uh, let's talk about two other things and that is the project that is going to be on today again. You had it last week. Yes. It's going to be following the same format as last week. Yes. Uh, but just to say this week, we have Lime partnering up with us. We will be having Double Bubble this evening. Okay. And an also, we will be having an ex tempo competition. Oh. You sing? <laughs> <laughs> anybody can take that. Anybody can take that. Yes. yes. Basically. Hopefully. Yeah. So um, we're inviting the public to. So you just show up? Are you have to pay to enter? No, 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 no you I don't, don't have think to pay so. to enter. You, you just, just come, come just to make see the what you can do, and right. then you also get to win prices. So, so you, you're singing not for free, you <laughs> <laughs> but you're it getting has paid. To be, it has to be on water. Oh, it yes. has to be on water. Yes, yes. all the topics must be on water. Yes, <laughs> water. To our topic. <laughs> right, yeah. right, and I'll also like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. and Mrs. Razan. Mm -hmm of helping us out from the beginning with this idea. Okay, so um, why the group talk about Water Friday? That's okay. kind of interesting. I like the name too. <laughs> it's not like Fish Friday, but it's Water Friday. Yes, well basically we, we were thinking our theme is Water Beyond the Surface Sustaining Life Secure in Our Future. So the idea popped up, Water's Friday, and we thought it was something good. And Mr. and Mrs. Brazan went along with the idea. They helped us out, and it came out well because we wanted something that will remain even after we're mm -hmm. finished with the project. Okay. Something lasting and effective. So, right. Um, so, pretty interesting. I thought it was wonderful last Friday. I didn't come and buy anything. <laughs> I think I drive by twice, but it was wonderful. I like what I saw there well manned, well managed and so forth and I, I hope you did make some money. Yes, you yes, did. did. Make some money. Uh, the, the project is costing you too, you have to, uh, to, to um, 
raise money to do things? Yes. 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 Fundra- we have um, fundra- fundraising activities. All right. Um, well, apart from Water Friday, what else have you done? Fundra- well, we've had a couple of well dance parties for youth, okay, right. right? Also this barbecue. Is, yes, yeah. we had one of that last mm-hmm. week, Saturday. Yeah. Um, and we have other things coming up. Like right. Saturday would be our walkathon. Right, our walkathon. Yes. That's we'll the like famous walkathon where you put mm-hmm. that yes. yes. Yeah. And we'd like to invite the public also. Okay. We're starting 10 a.m. and um, 5 p.m. To, no, until from oh. Grand Ann's um, Sugar Mill Round Sugar Mill, right. to, to NIS, NIS Car Park. That's a short one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can go in 10 minutes. Yes. Yeah. But also, um, we have in the, um, um, the, the Queen Show. High School, the Queen Show. So, right. what the Queen Show <laughs> <laughs> it's a Queen Show? Well, every year the Young Leaders does mm-hmm. have one. Yeah, but this year is more portraying on water. We want to, you know, stick some water. water. Stick water into it. Right. So, everything you do has to focus on water. has to revolve around water. water. Yes. Right, right. And um, I suppose. Um, um, I know some schools are looking at springs, some are looking at um, the management of water from one stage to another stage. Yours looking and focusing on the, bo- on the body. Well, we would be, our group, mm. the Water for Living group, well, we more focus on water in humans and okay. the amniotic fluid. Yeah. But since the, um, the project is like the, um, we put up, um, is basically it's not really only on Water the body, for life, yeah. But yes, we yes. seeking to um to clean up rivers and right. and lakes and everything and uh, how to conserve water. Um, we are going to Karakou to plant a hundred trees on the twenty second of March two thousand and eleven, okay. and we are asking people to help us out, asking the public to help us make that happen. Okay. That's pretty ambitious. <laughs> Actually, it's 50 make trees. A correction. <laughs> 50 um, trees. <laughs> on the 22nd of March this month, we will be going to Karaku to plant 50 trees, not 100. 100. <laughs> we'll plant 100 trees <laughs> in yeah, Grenada. Uh-huh. Okay. And we have um, a name for that day. It's called Plant Your Tree Day. And if, uh, um, well, the Ministry of Forestry is also <laughs> linking up with us for that project. And if you need a tree to plant, you can contact us or the Ministry of Forestry. Right. You want to give us a sense of the value of trees to water? Well, this um, has a part to play in the water cycle, right? So, we, as you said, it's water beyond our surface. So, we have to focus on everything, everything. So, this is why we came up with the idea of planting trees since it's important for us in the um, water cycle. <laughs> putting into water, yeah. rain and all of that. Pretty interesting project, yes. I like it's holistic. Mm-hmm. So there are, group with, there are groups within the 43 members yes, are that are targeting groups. various things. Five, yes, yes, yes. Yes. five groups. Well, you tell me what, I, I know what your group is focusing on. Tell me what the other groups are focusing Well, on. as I said, this group is Water for Life. Water for Life. We have the Water Cycle. That's water the cycle. group which will be planting the trees. Right. Uh, we have Water Pollution and Treatment. Water Pollution and Treatment. Water Conservation. Water Conservation. And Uses of Water. And Uses of Water. Yes. So these five groups within that group will then have a, a portfolio. Uh, awesome. whatever it is a project yes. uh, giving us a whole perspective on water as the theme for this year's Young Leaders project yes, yes because um, it's a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> well, we're up for it up for it you were yes. up for it we all form three Four. 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 All right. So how are you managing with your school well you just have to maintain a balance <coughs> some days you might have to leave a little bit early for meetings or uh, sometimes you would have more time to spend on your leaders. Sometimes it's hard to maintain a balance but you, we want we to do it we and we are motivated by our teachers and our principal so we know that since we, we still want to do it, we want to succeed and we want to win again so we'll, we'll put in the effort, we'll make a balance. So you're managing your schoolwork at the same time very well? Yes. Keeping good grades? 
Yes. Right, right, right. Yeah, were you in groups before? This is the first time you venture into something like this, girl guides or whatever. Oh, I wasn't in. Well, never. I never used to take part in like things like that. I'm more. I'm more interested in sports. Sports. Yeah. Okay, sports. Things like netball and basketball. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I played that for the Ken High School. So you school. find that that activity very useful to your? Yeah. Well, it helped me a lot to keep my body fit. Mm -hmm. And, and knowledge in terms of maybe yeah, learning a you learn a lot mm -hmm. and you get to like go places and experience a lot you get a lot of opportunities scholarships and stuff like that so it's complementing president your school work <laughs> <laughs> the, the project it's yeah. complementing your school yes, work in some yes. it comes into geography so exactly. it helps yeah. us with geography yes right. and, and a bit of geography right. yeah there's a bit of geography here <laughs> yes right so uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it and uh, I certainly hope you do well I know you, you have the capacity to win it yeah. yes we do uh, I hope you, you, you really flourish yes. but I'm fascinated the fact that you're not just limiting yourself to St. George's you, you are going to go to Karakou so you are, you are going to other parishes too, yeah. to explore yes, what? Yes, we're not in only Grenada. focusing on St. George's, mm -hmm. the whole of Grenada. The whole of Grenada. Yes. We're getting everybody involved. Exactly. Everyone. You find adults like me taking an interest? Well... <laughs> well, let's start with your parents. Uh -huh. Yes. Your parents? Yes. Uh -huh. They ask you, you know... Yes, yes, yes. Um, a lot. Question we are, um, <laughs> you know, what about the group? Are you tell them about it? Well, yeah, well, when I reach home, when I go home on afternoons, my mom, she's going to be like, it, the only thing she would hear me talking about is young leaders, young okay. leaders, young leaders. Right. And she take pretty interest in, like, helping me and everything. Like, when I had to get information on the amniotic fluid, she put out herself a lot, a Good. lot. Right. Same thing with you? Um, yes, my mom. Brothers and sisters and... Mom, my, mostly my mom, because mm. sometimes I might be washing dishes and I might leave the pipe open for a while longer that, uh, than I should. And she'd be like, it's supposed to be conserving water, you know? And this morning she was telling me, you have a pipe open, and then I had to go and close it. So she, she makes sure that I do what I'm supposed to do, and that we're not only just saying to conserve water, and that we ourselves are actually... Yes, actions speak longer than words. So we're actually doing what we're supposed to. So, President, you too have a sense of the importance of water. It's just not an abundant, unending water. You know now that uh, it is something that is precious and something we have to manage yes. and not abuse. Yes. <laughs> Good. Well, I want to wish you well. There are going to be a variety of things there this afternoon to sell. Yes. Uh, inexpensive? Yes, $5, um, $5, $5, $5 a cup, dollars. $10 a bowl. All right, that's reasonable. And we'll also have happy hour prices. Good. Don't forget the double bubble, the extempo competition. Right. So um, you should really come out and support us. I hope Miss Thomas sings. <laughs> 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 right, well, nice to have you. And Thank I you. I want to congratulate you. I'm, I'm sure you volunteered willingly. Yes. 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 Nobody had to come and pull you out. No. Right. So this is all a nice little group of happy people. Yes. yes. Okay, so let's say good morning to Ms. Batiste and to the entire staff. And good to have you. And God bless. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good. Well, you got to stick for a while still. <laughs> well, we want to thank you, our viewers, for being with us this morning. And um, we certainly urge you. Oh, yes, we still have somebody else to come. Uh, we just want to encourage you to support the young leaders at the Anglican High School this afternoon and all the other young leaders groups in the country. I think most of the secondary schools are participating. So give them your support and they're focusing on something that is important to each one of us, water. This group this morning focused on living. Water for water life. life. Water for life. Yes. And the particular group is focusing on water in the human body. Body and yes. water at birth. And water at birth. Yes. All right, I like it. <laughs> Take a break, we'll be back with someone very soon. We need to talk. I see your wife with all she, eyes black and blue and bruises all over her body. Is this the way you chose to show love? Look, if you look at your wife with love, violence would never come to your mind. And don't blame alcohol and stress. You chose to do it. Man, I used to see my father beat up my mother. Even though he used to hurt me, I used to like to see when they make up. Because I feel beating was part of love. Man, how you could think so? Somebody ever hit you? Hit me? Yeah, but you're hitting your wife. I know how she feeling you now. I, I want to stop. I, I just don't know how. You really want to stop? Well, I'm going to tell you how. 
call the Ministry of Social Development Domestic Violence Unit. Or you can call Legal Aid and Counseling. Somebody there is waiting to help you. The proceeding was a message from the Ministry of Social Development. Do you want a special help from God that enables you to recognize your sexuality as beautiful and good? Do you want a gift that will enable you to respect your sexuality and your fertility? Control your sexual powers, your sexual thoughts and desires and leave your gift of sexuality the way God intended? That gift is called chastity. Chastity is sexual goodness, sexual self-control. It means never using another person. Chastity is never easy, but real men and real women practice it. Real men and real women know that their bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Real men and real women know that chastity is the best preparation for marriage and that faithfulness in marriage makes for happy families. Ask God to help you to practice chastity in your life. Right, it's now 20 minutes to 9, and um, our friends in Caracol, we say good morning to them, and uh, looking forward to Carnival 2011. It's the weekend of Carnival in Caracol, and uh, on Sunday, I understand there's the Alexia taking jab-jabs to Caracol, and, and if you're one of those people who like to get yourself painted and, well, they say have a good time, I don't know how true it is, but if you want to experience it, I think it's not that expensive. I think it's maybe less than the normal $180 to go Caracol. So you get onto the boat Sunday. It may take a little longer. It's certainly going to take a little longer. And you can land in Caracol in time for Juve on Monday. So we want to encourage you to enjoy it and make it a pretty clean carnival in Caracol. Well, we're going to turn to um, um, the area of Happy Hill and uh, Northwest St. George. We have with us Leah Fraser. She's the project coordinator, Happy Hill Community Liaison Committee. Good morning, Leah. Good morning. Uh, at first, I take you for a basketball player, <laughs> netball player. You play sport? No. Uh, seriously? I thought you had the height, so when you go up, it's basically unstoppable. No. Not very sportish. No, I don't. You don't? <laughs> I'm attracted to more fashion, modeling, and so forth. Okay, okay. So you would have, um, let me put it like this way, um, <laughs> you would uh, certainly follow um, the Oscar and those things where people are in the latest fashion and so forth. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the generation. <laughs> so the Happy Hill, the Happy Hill community, let me put it the Happy Hill Community Liaison Committee. What is that? Okay. Part of my mandate was to develop and implement a community mm. policing project. Yeah. And I went to Happy Hill one day, and mm. but basically, I am the liaison officer mm. for Happy Hill. Mm. I've been working closely with the community during the past months. And during that, policing project mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. in Happy Hill. My target was young people working along with other stakeholders such as the churches, the elderly persons and social groups. The aim was to sensitize the people of Happy Hill on the issue of crime prevention and other areas of interest. And my objective was to foster a closer working relationship between the police and the community. So I decided to set up a committee mm -hmm. of 15 persons right. where we would, where they are responsible for identifying whatever problems in their community mm -hmm. and they would liaise with me as a liaison officer and I would take it to the divisional officer, see how best we can address it. The team for that project is partnering with members of the community to ensure safety and security. Sunday the 27th, which was last Sunday, All right was one of was the most successful day for me okay. and the rgpf because the event was 
it was a really good one it was nice and on that day we had the lo the presentation of the lace on committee presented by acp dowling Bartholomew. he did a pretty good job Great. yeah he did a really nice job and uh, we had food for the needy like hamper food baskets we gave to 10 needy persons in that community we had complimenting that occasion music by the rgpf police band we had the unveiling of a billboard showing exactly the partnering of members of that community with the police well that's wonderful congratulations Thank in you. fact i spoke to somebody there and they were asking us well, where's the camera? I said I didn't know about it, so we oh, could okay. not make it. But the individual said it was a wonderful event, and um, I, I didn't realize it was of that magnitude. And uh, you are getting good response from the community? Yes, so far the community, they responded to it very well. And they like the idea. They, like they the embrace idea. it, yeah. Well, young people, I suppose, always a challenge. Your age group and younger. And I suppose the reason why they have you, you seem to have a let me put it like that. Some, some, something that maybe could draw young people. I have a passion for them. You I like to work with them. them. Ever since in school, I had like young leaders and so forth. Mm. And I used to do a lot of open debates with young okay. people. So okay. I enjoy doing that. And I'll continue to do it because it's something I like. It's part of me. Great. So it didn't take much to get this thing done. What are some of the things you, you are hearing from them? Because you're going to listen to them and then you're going to come up with some, I suppose if they have challenges, obviously you can't fix everything yes. and maybe you can't fix anything in fact but i suppose you a listening air is important mm -hmm. so um what are some of the things they are telling you basically you know some of them like this there was this young girl in particular she mm. said that her mother has so much of children mm. and she needs some kind of counseling she needs somebody to talk to okay. so there and then i was readily to respond because i like right. doing that Fine. so i spoke to her and i have her come by you know she visits me ever so often and mm. As far as I see, she's getting things done. Good. So, so yeah. you are, you are finding solutions to, to their some problems. Of this, right? Yes. Right. Once I can help. All right. Good. And um, what about adults uh, like myself? Are we cooperating with you? Yes. Getting adults mm -hmm. to cooperate with mm -hmm. you? Yes, they are. I notice you have a uh, wonderful person, Michelle Warwick. Yes, you? Ms. Warwick basically yeah. is my vice president on mm -hmm. that committee. She has been doing a great job. We have people like Miss Chapel, Elizabeth Chapel in the Drug Control Secretariat. These mm. people here, we have the principal of Happy Hill Secondary School. Okay. We have one of the corporal in the police station, woman corporal, 9-1 Dumont. You know, mm. and these people, they have been working very good. So you are, you are able to join in the talent of people of all strata in yeah, the community? Yeah, of all, yeah. Right. Uh, but that, let's put it this way, uh, um, w the people you speak about there, uh, certainly mature pe people. Are there young people in the 18s, 20s who are part of the committee? One young person. One young person. Yeah, one young guy. He's Dwayson Williams. He's a PRO mm -hmm. and he has been doing a pretty good job because he like it. Okay. Yeah, because since the first day I spoke to him, he was ready to respond. So I suppose um, the, the group is designed to combat um, delinquency. Truancy. Truancy. Drug case. Drug case. Right. Even, you know, it's part of their social ills and major concerns. It could be even something, you know, even a personal problem with somebody, mm. like they need some assistance, you know, sometimes you can assist. Okay. Because doing the food for the needy, that wasn't part of it, you know, but you decided to okay. do something that would assist the people. Right. So you get a mixture, a bag full of complaints, you dissect it, they need counselors, mm -hmm. let's say maybe they need something in sport or to have a better understanding of policing, mm -hmm. you will go and draw wherever that resource is, yes. maybe available, and bring mm -hmm. it to the community. Yes, and assist them okay. the most possible way I can. Right. <laughs> what about the, uh, how many, two schools, Happy Hill Secondary and a primary school in the area? Yes. Uh, you will link with them also? Basically, um, seeing that I took up that community, I would be the boys club teacher for mm -hmm. the for next boys club session. Okay. I'll be doing that there. And I'll do school visits in the secondary school and maybe well sometimes I could do a lecture okay. on youth delinquency, mm -hmm. could be teenage pregnancies, right. quite a few peer pressure. Right. Yeah, quite a few. What 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 aroused your passion for that? <laughs> it's a community work I mean anything in uh, well I love sports and it's natural. But what aroused your passion for undertaking this project? Basically, I like young people. Okay. I just like them, and I just find some way that I could assist. Because, mm -hmm. you know, 
in life, there must have been something that happened to you that you mm. must reach out to somebody. Okay. And I came from <laughs> a sort of poor background, you know, mm. and I always thought that I maybe needed somebody to help me, you know. Mm. So I enjoy being with these people. So okay. any opportunity I get to talk to them, I'll mm. just do it. Good. So it's not a burden on you. Mm -mm. I like it. It's something that's part of me. It's natural. It's just natural. Good. And I suppose you're a police officer. Yes, I am. All right. Three yeah. years and eight months in the RGPF. All right. Basically, the idea was born when I was transferred to CRD. Okay. Though I had a passion for community policing, but when I went to the community relation department, mm -hmm. The officer in charge at that time was, well, even now, woman CEO cadet, Miss okay. Cadet. She's a wonderful Yes, yeah, she's very, right. very, Thanks very so wonderful. Andrew. And she like, yeah. she embraced these things. So right. she, um, you know, she always encouraged you to do what you can. And she told me that she think I can do something. So I just went ahead and I told her, well, this is the idea. And I went with it. Against the, when she was in Grenville, mm -hmm. and the Grenville police, we had the media going there to beat them. Quite a number of activities when mm -hmm. she was in Grenville, so I was delighted when I heard she was promoted and heading the community division. Yeah. Well, I think she has a good foot soldier in you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. mm -hmm. uh, she always encouraged me to do good. Right. I appreciate her. Right. <laughs> and even Mr. Francois, he was even mm. very supportive too. Good. Yeah. Well, I know it's not an easy challenge you have on your hands. No, it is not. Yeah, I know the the world of the youth today is a far cry from when I was their age. Yeah. And it has become more challenging. And I'm glad there are young people as yourself who are out there to lend a helping hand. I'm certainly hoping that you would find the energy and the support to mold many minds and many yeah. hearts into what the society desires. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed doing it, so I'll continue to do it. But Monday, as I rushed through the streets of St. Mm -hmm. George's, there were many persons asking me, Officer, I saw that thing on TV and I heard about it. Is there a way that we can get it to our community too? Okay, so so people have identified you on television yeah. and now they're asking you. They can. Yeah. So th this, is the f this is the first, let me put it, is this a pioneering? Uh, venture of the community, community, the uh, relations division. <laughs> well, so far I understand that is the first. Is the first. They have community policing, but that sort of lays on committee thing that mm -hmm. has been introduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have something they call the citizens' advisory board. Right, I met a gentleman about? yesterday with a lovely jersey, yeah. Bill, actually, and he was telling me they have a wonderful okay. one in St. Paul's. Um, let me put it this way. We hear of gangs, and I certainly know that they are, because mm -hmm. there was one close to where I live. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't know that really there was anything named mm -hmm. gangs. And uh, then I was told about the Bloods, who I, I know many of the young ones, mm -hmm. know their parents and myself. Uh, um, I suppose those are things you'll have to confront people who think about getting in these little, well, certainly um, groups that are anti-society. Mm -hmm. um, you, you will have to work with people who are involved in these groups and yeah, try to... Yeah, because all of that fall under youth delinquency. Okay. And these people are fine, you know, in this time now. They the place gets so modernized that they should study to go to school, get an education and try to uplift themselves, mm -hmm. elevate. Right. Then stop looking for trouble for your parents. Right. You understand? And even the young girls too with teenage pregnancies, I'm really sorry for them. If I could help all of them, I wish I could. Well, you are but helping them. But you are helping them. <laughs> so I hope uh, the information that I, and how I reach out to them that they would mm -hmm. hear. Good. So... Um, people looking at you and may wish to engage you to talk to the scout group or to yes they, they can call mm -hmm. you at the community relations department they can call me at central police station four four zero two two four five I'm open at any time right and the name is Leah Fraser Leah Fraser woman police constable eight six two eight six two well Leah I want to thank you for dropping by this morning thanks uh, you were kind of nervous at first eh? <laughs> I don't think there's any nerves anymore. No. Right. <laughs> she was wondering if it was live or it's going to be recorded. <laughs> She's a wonderful person. First time I've seen her, actually. I want to wish you well and hope that you get a support. No, you often see me because I do um, the security upstairs well, you at the different PM's office. <laughs> you look different <laughs> right. Yes. Well, good. Mm -hmm. well, good to have you. Mm -hmm. And I hope you get the success and the rewards. Certainly the energy you put into it. Yeah. Right. So here's where we're going to conclude for the week. We okay. want to thank you for viewing. We want to wish you well on behalf of Garvey Wilson and Akir and John Jerome Jr., Miss Murray, who communicates with the guests and Amanda and everybody else. I'm Mary Robertson. It's Carnival Weekend in Caracu, in Trinidad and Tobago, in New Orleans, Brazil, and other parts of the world, Dominica. We trust that it will be a wonderful carnival. And remember, 
uh, it's Lent after Carnival and today is also um, International Women's Day of Prayer. The prayer today was written by the people of, um, of Chile and the theme, how many loaves have you? And on Sunday, all roads will lead to Bellevue in St. David. That's where the Grenada National Women's Organization, along with the Department of Social, of the Ministry of Social Development, will observe International Women's Day. So be a part of all these activities. Enjoy them. God's willing, we come back on Monday. We'll do it all over again. Until then, do have a good one. See you. Bye-bye.